Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is a look at my five C's of survivability for cold weather environments. These tools are going to change based on the weather and based on our environment, and we're going to demonstrate a lot of skills today with just these five items. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button, leave me a comment down below, and stand by. All right, that first item we're going to talk about is fire. In a cold weather environment, the best fire starting tool that we can have for our 5Cs is going to be that Bic lighter. Sometimes our kit is going to be soaking wet to include our fire starting device. Saving a drowned lighter is a good survival skill to know and practice. And we can just throw our lighter in some water and then dry it out using our breath, shaking it out, rubbing it on our pants, and then finally getting that lighter viable and warm to actually produce flame to get a fire going. So we saved our lighter, but another waterproof material that we get to wrap around our lighter is going to be that bright orange duct tape. Notice how the lighter and the tape itself are bright in color so we can see it easily. We can use the tape for a variety of purposes, but the primary purpose with that tape is as a flame extender. One thing we need to do is add a small tab by bending over some of the tape on top of itself so we can grab that tape because it is cold outside and we're gonna lack dexterity in our hands and our fingers and we need to be able to grab that tape, rip it off and then use it as a flame extender. We can take that lighter once we save it from the water and ignite it, ignite that tape. It will act as a flame extender so we can save the fuel in our lighter and then use the tape to actually start a fire. We may also have that lighter and that lighter may be out of fuel because we haven't checked it or it may be damaged because we fell, hit the lighter on a rock, and the fuel was knocked out of the lighter for whatever reason. But we need to practice another training skill of having a lighter that is without fuel or maybe broken for whatever reason. And all we have left is that sparking source with a ferro rod underneath the grind wheel in the bick itself. And we can still produce flame using improvisational methods. And so training this is also very important for a cold weather environment, which means bringing natural tinder material along with us as we collect it, or making tinder material out in the field with our first fire in the form of char. What we can do with this lighter, remove the safety housing on top of that lighter, and then using char material we created with our first fire, simply strike that striker wheel, drive sparks onto that char material because it will take that spark very easily. And then we can just take that char material, apply it to a tinder bundle, blow it into flame, and we have fire. This is a great way to test skills and ensure that we have what we need for a cold weather environment. Understanding the multifunctional applications of a lighter, even if it's without fuel, is what sets a lot of people apart from others studying survival out in the field, getting a fire going in a cold weather environment. To conserve our fuel, using a lighter as our primary ignition source out in the field, that means prior preparation, developing and building that proper fire lay with our tinder material, a platform to lay it on, and then our smalls, pencil size or pencil lead size, and then larger and larger materials, setting up that fire in place to be able to light it quickly. One of the best tests is to light a fire with five seconds or less of open flame from that lighter. This is to ensure that we know proper fire lay material as well as building a fire lay to get that fire going in an emergency when it matters and demonstrating proper survival skills using a basic tool like this lighter. Of course, if we don't have that lighter, we lose it, damage it beyond repair, or we can't use that lighter, we're going to have to go to ground and use a primitive friction fire set to get our fire to survive, especially in a cold weather environment. And so here we're going to use a Baudrillard friction fire set made out of cottonwood, which is a soft wood, plentiful in this area, but any softwood will do that is not resinous or doesn't have any tar or pitch in it. Softwood generally, if we can leave our thumb nail indentation in the wood, it is generally a softwood and will work for a friction fire set. It is important to harvest this material and then process it down. The most work is going to come up front in actually producing this set, carving it, especially with an axe if that's our only cutting tool, and then processing the material down and then collecting the tinder 
to actually have available to blow it into flame and get a fire going. But once we have this set in place, it's business as usual, especially if we practice this skill, which is one that we should practice every time we go to the field, is making a friction fire set in case we have to rely on this if we're without our primary fire starting tools. But business as usual, burn in, carve the notch, get the ember, take that ember, apply it to a tinder bundle, and then blow it into flame to get our survival fire out here in the woods all right that is it for fire now we're going to talk about the second item in our kit which is going to be cordage any type of cordage will do but we're going to use paracord for this video because it is ubiquitous and we can use it for a variety of skills for survival we just demonstrated that friction fire set and we used paracord for the bow drill string to get that fire going. We can take the same paracord and preload it in our shoelaces or our bootlaces to have it on us in case we lose the rest of our kit. Now you heard me talking about preloading. Preloading is a term picked up in SEER school and all it means is to gather survival items and place them in our clothing or on our person or even on our kit. One thing we can do with our paracord is preload our axe handle because our axe is going to be one of our five C's of survival in a cold weather environment. We can take that axe handle with that paracord and simply just create a whipping around the handle so we have that paracord stashed there about 10 feet or so that we can use in an emergency or just have it ready on standby in case we need it later on for use. Now the primary purpose of cordage inside our survival kits is lashing and binding materials. We harvest natural materials off the landscape with our cutting tools and then we lash and bind them together to build tools, to build traps, shelters, anything we need to use those natural materials with. Cordage is going to hold all of those things together to make our lives easier in survival. And so one of the best ways we can practice and train survival skills with cordage in our kit is building things to help us transport natural materials or the rest of our kit over distance and terrain because we may be out there in the field with just our basic kit and need to transport it so we can free up our hands as we travel. Building a Roycroft pack frame is one of the best examples of this because we can build a pack frame very easily with our cordage and then strap all of our kit, all of our resources to that pack frame, simply throw it over our shoulders, and then we have that kit ready to go. We can travel, our hands are free, and we can gather more materials on our way in route to our survival location. A recommendation is that we use toggles to lash our materials or our kit to our pack frame. Using paracord, we create just simple fisherman knots and create large loops about 12 to 18 inches and then a simple lark's head attached to our basic frame. To attach our toggles to ensure they don't slip off, we're going to use a modified lark's head. We bend the loop down, creating that lark's head, pull a little bit out to one side to create a larger ear, wrap that ear around and over top of the other ear, ensuring that, that paracord crosses in front, fit our toggle, and then pull tight. You'll notice the lark's head crosses over forming an X underneath that toggle and it's set and it won't slip. Create enough cordage and loops and toggles to fit all three sides of our Roycroft pack frame until we're set in place ready to load our gear. Once these toggles are in place and ready to go, now we can attach our gear or our material or whatever we have with us. We're going to use a hank of paracord inside our pockets that is about six feet in length and this is all the cordage we're going to need to actually strap our kit to our pack frame. We start at the bottom with an end of the line bowline just over that toggle, go diagonally looping each toggle across our pack or our blanket or our kit, looping it on that third toggle and then beginning back again at the bottom, looping underneath that toggle and going to the top and we're going to tie a non-slip knot or whatever knot we can to attach our gear, make sure it's not going to fall off, and our pack frame is ready to go. All we have to do now is just slide our tools inside the netting we've created with that six foot hank, and we're ready to don our equipment. On our pack frame, we just created a simple three weave or French braid of about 15 feet of paracord, and then use those as straps to don our pack frame and kit. And that does it for our cordage for our kit. Next for our container is a bush pot. We have a bush pot with a main bush pot and a bale as well as a lid that doubles as a frying pan that has handles with it that we can use over fire. 
One of the primary uses of our bush pot, not only to go over fire, but we can use this as a container to gather materials as well. Cottonwood, bark, especially from dead ones in this area, is plentiful, and we can use that bush pot to gather it up. We've had a lot of rain and freezing temperatures in the last few days, so a lot of this tinder material is going to be soaking wet, and we need to lay it out in the sun to let it dry so we can use it for our fire. And of course, the primary reason we have a metal container as part of our cold weather five seas of survival is to be able to treat water by boiling it to make it safe to drink. We can gather that dirty water up from the source and simply place it over a fire because we have that metal container. We're not worried about it burning or being damaged in the fire. And we can just leave it over that fire like this Swedish torch to let it boil and treat that water to make it safe. Bringing it to boil is a surefire way to make that water safe to drink. Now let's say we don't want to use up our cordage to suspend our bush pot over a fire, but we still want to have a way to suspend our bush pot over a fire to cook food, boil water to make it safe to drink, make medicines, whatever it is. There's a technique we can use to actually create a simple tripod suspension or pot hanger with our bush pot without using our cordage. We're gonna to need to gather a green sapling with a Y fork on the end that we can use to actually suspend our bush pot. We're gonna twist the sapling to make it more flexible and then be able to wrap it around our tripod eventually to suspend our bush pot. Once we have that sapling twisted up and it's flexible, we're gonna create what's called a simple withy tripod or bush pot suspension or pot hanger. And we're just gonna gather up three poles to create a simple tripod. Without any cordage, we're gonna use the flexible end of that sapling to tie around our tripod to hold it together, and then that hook at the bottom is gonna suspend our bush pot. You'll notice that this is a very simple method, and our bush pot is successfully suspended over our fire. We have a small trench dug for our fire pit, but still, this tripod with a withy attached to it and that hook at the bottom for our pot hanger is very easy to use, very easy to craft, especially if we know what materials we're looking for. And we can make it very, very easily while safeguarding and protecting our cordage so we're not wasting cordage in the field that we could be using for other tasks. This is a very simple method, great for bushcraft, great for survivalists, especially a minimalist approach if we're looking for simple things to do. Now my recommendation is to have a bush pot that has a lid on it that doubles as a fry pan or some sort of other container that we can control and manipulate over a fire. The reason is we can use that primary bush pot to treat our water to make it safe to drink so we always have water available to stay hydrated. But then we can use that lid as a secondary container and in this case we're going to use that lid to render deer tallow. We have fresh deer tallow that we're going to render down and actually turn into a candle and so we can use that fry pan to do that task while we still have water available in our bush pot. For our 5Cs, for a cold weather environment, the axe is going to be our primary cutting tool because we can control it a lot easier with gross motor skills compared to fine motor skills. We want an axe that is about 18 inches in length, a good 2 pound head, scandy grind so we can carve with it as well. And we also want a flat pole on the back that we can use as a hammer or a baton to process and make materials out in the woods. The number one reason we have that axe as our primary cutting tool is to be able to take down large sections of material very easily using gross motor skills and avoid hurting ourselves. The axe is going to be that primary tool to fell trees, split logs, take down material, and harvest those sections that we need for shelter craft or fire craft for survival. Just like a saw, just like a knife, the axe is going to give us the ability to make other tools once we harvest material off the landscape. One of the first tools and easiest that we can make with either a knife or even an axe is a simple dig stick about a foot or two in length and roughly two to three inches in diameter. We can make this simple dig stick that will give us a multifunctional tool for survival. The dig stick we can use not only to dig in the earth, but we can use it as a baton, we can use it as a toggle, we can use it as a club, and we can even use it as a throwing stick to go after game to help feed ourselves. One of the biggest tests of our use with an axe is processing large sections of material 
down into smaller viable sections that we can use not only for shelter but also for fire keeping a fire going in a cold environment is one of our first priorities if not the greatest priority because we're going to keep ourselves warm with that fire maintain thermal regulation and prevent hypothermia that's why we need to understand how to use an axe and use it properly if we can't split a log like this one because it has a lot of knots in it we're going to need to create some tools to help us split this log and what we can use are just simple wedges to split this material down to make it smaller sections in use for firecraft besides using those wedges to split larger material that may have a lot of knots in it we can use a different method for smaller material that will be more manageable for our axe and this is called the platform method just a basic method to help us avoid injuring ourselves while still processing material what we do is grab a log and place it down in front of us horizontally to act as a platform we could then take our logs that we want to split and place them on top of that platform and then simply strike the top with our axe the ground will act as a little bit of resistance to get our axe head into that material and then from there we can begin to split it down and process that material to smaller and smaller sections to feed into our fire and those are just a few of the things we can do with our axe especially one like this a small forest axe for our five c's for cold weather that final item is going to be a 100% wool blanket. The most important portion of any survival shelter is going to be the forest floor or the matting that we have down or our bed. That is going to protect us from losing heat through conduction to the forest floor, which is very cold this time of year in the northern plains. So we need to have four inches of compressed debris minimum of dead dry material on that floor to help protect us debris bed and now our wool blanket we can actually make a very comfortable shelter that will keep us warm next to a long burning fire all night we lay out that blanket in a diamond configuration lay down taking our shoes off pull one corner up over our feet and then tuck in both sides left and right around and underneath us and then pull the top over us over our head while we lay down next to our fire on top of our bed to keep ourselves warm throughout the night when we aren't using our wool blanket for our shelter or we're going to strap it to our pack frame that we made earlier a very simple technique is to take our blanket fold it into thirds and simply roll from one end we're going to roll it as tight as we can until we get about a foot or two away from that other end with the three folds we created we basically made a pocket that we can fit that wool blanket inside we just pull up that other end tuck in the blanket that we've rolled until it's nice and tight and we have our blanket roll ready to go that we can strap to our pack frame ready for movement and that does it for our fifth and final item that wool blanket all right guys well a very down and dirty video with a lot of skills using five c's for cold weather and environment i really hope you liked this video if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button leave me a comment in the comment section i always appreciate your feedback i want to thank you guys for everything you do for me for this channel for your likes your views your subscriptions your comments your feedback and your shares and i'll be back with another video as soon as i can guys thanks